George Warren. Who? Uh, how, how are you, George? I'm all right, Dev. I just want to know how you get. How do you get these intros? I don't know. That he just started doing it. Thomas. He, he, yes, I think yesterday he called me very talented, <laughs> as well. So, you know, how, how are you? Clearly mixed okay. up with something. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing great. Really. Uh, big show. Liverpool yeah, great homecoming. Show. Yeah. Balls yeah. back. Listen, he is. I said it at the press conference, and I've been saying it earlier. I did a bit with Buncey uh, in a rare interview like this. Now, for me, the most exciting British fighter to watch. I love watching him. It's just always all action. He's powerful. He's aggressive. Throws combinations, hooks, uppercuts. He leans in when he takes his shots. He, he, he throws them, takes risks. He's prepared to take one. So he's always exciting, and he's done it the hard way. You know, you have. You have fighters that are world level or get world title opportunities, but you know they get the rub of the green. They may get the vacant or an interim, or maybe the champion's not at the top of the division. Maybe he's a bit of a weaker champion. Ray Vargas is a quality operator. He beat him. He should have been WBC champion that night. Ray Ford, quality operator. He beat him. He's now WBA champion. He should be unified. And I think Ray Ford will go on and do good stuff at Super Feather. I think he's more than capable of becoming a two-weight world champion. So Nick's at that level. He's at that class. He's a world-class operator, and British boxing's got to get behind him. He's got a hungry opponent, as you can see from Ronnie Rios there, who wants it. You can just see that intensity. You can see the way Robert Diaz is talking about his man as well. He's got to come through that. But if he does come through against Ronnie Rios, what, what kind of plans are in place? I keep hearing mm. things in new ways out there, could move up to featherweight. What, what can you tell us, George? Yeah, look, I mean, a new way will be the decider of what he is going to do. He's, he's earned that right. He's a, he's a superstar selling 60,000 tickets and has a, has a huge TV contract behind him in Japan with Amazon. If he moves up and wants to take on Nick Ball, I know Nick Ball and I know Paul Stevenson. They will be saying to me, go and try and make that fight. And that's what we will do if they give us that instruction. But I think at the moment, you can only deal with what you can deal with. And our eye is on Ronnie Rios. Our eye is on big performance, big homecoming night, big night for Liverpool boxing, huge night for all the young and up and coming fighters from the region that are under our roster. And if Nick can do the business and these other guys, we can keep growing the sport back in this region it's been a long time since we've been here it's been a long time since world title action has been in this in this region for some time so eyes on the prize saturday night great performance from him great performance from the rest of the card and after that unify that's what i want nick to do and i want him to unify i want him to become a big big star like i say not just in british boxing world boxing it feels like that star power is growing so much on the undercard. I'm not going to go through all of it, but someone who perhaps caught the attention on the undercard press conference was Hadier Herrera, mm -hmm. uh, unbeaten in 15, and uh, his broken English is very, very piercing. <laughs> yeah, I think as piercing as he is in the ring, if mm -hmm. I'm honest. He is... Look, I got, I got wind that he was unattached and available, and... I'd seen some footage, I'd heard some stories, I'd heard some sparring stories, and then when it was a case of that we got the opportunity, I met with his manager, Scott, who also manages Jack Turner, who I think is a phenomenal talent from here as well. But Jodia is he's a rarity in my opinion. I think he's someone that, at, at this moment in time, could be considered a legitimate generational talent. That's how good I think he could be. Now, we're early stages, so I don't want to get too carried away. But if he does what we think he's capable of doing, he's up there at possibly being one of the best super featherweights we've seen, certainly in a ring in this country. Well, all eyes are on Saturday night for that one. Uh, since I've got you, we've, you know, the shows just keep on coming. We're in Riyadh next week, another huge Riyadh season show, headlined by Better Be Ever against Bivol, which is probably the best fight that you can make in boxing, George. Definitely the best fight you can make in boxing. I cannot wait <laughs> to watch it. I'm, you know, I flip-flop on it every day I change my mind they're both just great guys as well they're just you know, just class you just look at them at the press conference and at weigh-ins and how they conduct themselves with the media you know, there's no there's no stupid remarks being made they're just all about business they're all about professionalism they're all about doing what they need to do in the ring to do what they want to accomplish and unify and become undisputed it's just a sit back relax enjoy moment do not blink. It could, it could finish at any moment. It could end up being 
it, uh, do you know what? You can't predict it. You just can't predict what type of fight it will be. But all I know is it is must-watch viewing. It certainly is. Look, a couple of fights where maybe you won't be able to sit back and relax so much, where you've got a real interest in Fabio Wardley against Fraser mm -hmm. Clark and, of course, Raven Chapman finally challenging for a world title against Sky Nicholson. Give us your thoughts on those fights. Yeah, look, they're, they're, they're tough nights, competitive fights, competitive night of boxing, just like all Riyadh season cards, just like I think, you know, we've been trying to do here at Queensbury as well with what we've been doing with the Magnificent Seven shows and stuff. It's about quality competition. That's what sport's about. And that's what you've got on October 12th. You know, talking about that fight as the main event, you can't choose between them. You couldn't choose between Fabio and Fraser. Certainly the judges couldn't choose between them in the last fight. They called it a draw. I think there's enough for Fabio to have learnt that I think he should come through it and I think he can do it and I think he should become should be able to win that fight, come through it, become British champion and move on from that level because I think he's capable of doing it and that's why we've signed him. But Fraser's a great fighter, good bloke as well. Yeah. And, you know, look, Raven, we've believed in her right from the beginning. You know, I think this could be her moment, but Sky's a very good fighter. She's got a great team. Um, you know, I'm sure Eddie will be hoping that there might be a little bit of a, a change in <laughs> a change in these results that have been happening between the two groups at the moment. But I'm, I'm convinced we're going to get a couple of good wins for Queensbury on uh, October 12th.